Hello gamers, I am alive. Feeling good, Fe like actually feeling completely fine. Ate a lot yesterday after the colonoscopy. I made a, a huge mistake though. So right after the colonoscopy, went to McDonald's. 10 piece fries, Coke Zero, the classic. It, it, I'm not a doctor, but whenever I'm either hungry or not feeling that well, it's what I prescribe myself. And can I tell you something? 100% hit rate. Never in my life, as an adult at least, have I ever eaten that meal and been like, I feel worse. Every time I eat it, I'm like, I feel amazing. Now, because I, I had, I don't want to say starved, like it was like a huge endeavor, but because I hadn't eaten in like 30 hours, about two hours after the McDonald's, I got hungry again. Had a little, I had some Kanaka broad in the house, had some Kanaka broad. Kate said, what do you want for dinner? You know, you didn't eat any dinner yesterday, so maybe you can choose what to eat for dinner. I said, you know what? That pizza you got yesterday looks so delicious. What if we go like order in from a place where I can get like a pizza and you can get something that's not a pizza because you had pizza last night. She said, that sounds great. I ate a bunch of pizza I, and I think maybe I overdid it a little bit, but still, I, I, I feel like I'm probably calorie neutral right now. Like I feel like it, if you look at it over the it, 24 hours, I've probably had 4,000 calories. In 48 hours though, I've also had 4,000 calories. So I think I got, I, I, I managed to bring myself back to, back to the baseline. There's not really anything to say about the, the colonoscopy, like there's no arc, okay? Well, I mean, I guess there is. <laughs> it's I mean, it was, it was like a 24 hour thing. I'm also, can I tell, and I don't even mean this in like a, a, a judgmental way at all, quite the opposite. I was surprised how many people had had colonoscopies. I'm like the only person that I know IRL that is uh, had a colonoscopy in my age group and yet uh, like online there were thousands of people who were like yeah when I had to do this I'm like blah 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 and I'm like dude honestly thank you so much for the, for the well wishes because otherwise I might have been like this colonoscopy is going to be um, like a real endeavor but instead everybody was just like the prep kind of sucks but the colonoscopy itself is not that bad and by the way I know I, I'm late I wore the shirt I knew you loved the shirt I wore the shirt because I uh, I wanted to atone for being a little and it's all I have a little bit of extra laundry to do I'm not gonna uh, disagree with that that's I'm not gonna hide that from you I'm not gonna obfuscate that but I, I brought it back regardless just to say I'm sorry but in terms of the colonoscopy okay so the, the, the anecdotally speaking I had to go to the pharmacy and pick up the industrial laxative that you're supposed to uh, drink all of before the colonoscopy I looked around the pharmacy in the laxative section found a little bottle like this big of what I thought was what the doctor wanted me to get I checked the prescription it's not really a prescription, it's just instructions. I checked the bottle. I was like, some of these ingredients match up. But I said, you know what, just to be sure, just to be sure, let me talk to the pharmacist to make sure that this is right. So I brought this little bottle up to the pharmacist and I showed her what my doctor told me and she's like, oh no, you don't want that. You want this? And then she reached under the counter and pulled out like an industrial jug of antifreeze like that you would buy from Canadian Tire or Home Depot or something like that and she's like you want this and I was like okay and then she had the audacity she was like do you still want that little bottle and I was like no I think this will be sufficient thank you then so the the laxative you buy is not even liquid it's powder and then they tell you very specifically when you get home fill the jug with four liters of lukewarm water do not use cold but then immediately put it in the fridge because if you try to drink it lukewarm, it'll taste like poison. So I filled this jug with lukewarm water, put it in the fridge, and then, I mean, like, from that point onwards, it, on, it, in big, bold letters, it says, do not use cold water. Probably, I guess it's like a, you know, it's not as good of a, a solvent, right? So the powder won't dissolve, which makes perfect sense. I've taken undergraduate level chemistry and even passed and got the credit so I can you know, say that with authority, I think. I don't remember, it, it, it was not Move a Call, although I love the names. I think this one was called Colite or something like that. Like it, it's, I don't know, I guess it's coal for colon and light because it tastes like pure salt because it's filled with uh, electrolytes so that you don't 
screw up your body's uh, homeostatic equilibrium by drinking four liters of water in two hours. <laughs> and then, so it, it's, it has like a, a, a good balance of ions so you like don't die or, you know, start leaking potassium in your brain or something like that. But anyway, second worst part of the colonoscopy, drinking four liters of that in four hours. It was the I'm I the the problem the first glass I was like the taste is bad but whatever it's just liquid then you realize you got to drink 10 glasses of it in uh in 4 hours so you got to drink like a glass every 20 minutes and you start to realize like it's actually not the taste man it's the fact that like I I was using a metal straw cuz they they said a straw makes it tastes not so bad. If you have like a metal straw in an iced coffee and you pull like, you know, you with your diaphragm, you pull as hard as you can on the iced coffee, you can drain half of it in a single pull. With the uh, coal light, you pull like as hard as you can and then the glass comes down like two centimeters every single time. Like you've got to do like nine full chugs to get to the bottom because it's so viscous like it, it's like drinking the I don't even know I, I don't I don't have an analog it's like you know the 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 plastic you use to laminate uh, like a business card or something like that it's like that so that's the second worst part because every glass just gets worse but it, you know I, I didn't throw up the and by the way and this is the next part I'm also not trying to say don't get a colonoscopy quite the opposite. I want, like, if you have to get a colonoscopy, don't procrastinate. The procedure itself is actually fine. You have to drink four liters of something that tastes bad, don't be a baby. Like, you know, it's not worth dying for. But anyway, the, the part that came after chugging the laxative, not that bad. And I not to steal valor, everybody was like, you wait till what comes next. What comes next is four hours to six hours of on and off bathroom time where I just played Super Auto Pets on my phone. That's not a, after what we did uh, with the infection, where I was basically doing that, but also felt like I was going to pass away. That was just another day at the office for me. That's no big deal. I was grinding. The actual and and now we're going like quick into. I mean, this is like uh, uh, we're starting in media res. The worst part of the colonoscopy was about three seconds long and it was when I was bare ass on the examination table and I was talking to the doctor about um you, she's like you know do you smoke do you have diabetes blah 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 and I answered all her questions and then she was like okay you seem like a healthy guy we're gonna give you the normal amount of sedative she tells the the nurse or the anesthesiologist like here's how much sedative we're gonna give him it's conscious sedative so I'm I'm awake the whole time I, they didn't put me to sleep they just uh you know, they um, sedated me a little bit so I, I was more relaxed. And then I felt nothing, like, no, because it's very subtle, the, the sedative. But before it hit, with no warning whatsoever, I felt like some pressure around my butthole, followed by my doctor putting two fingers inside, like she had rubbed like Vaseline around the outside, then with no warning, shoving two fingers through and doing like one of these at which point like as soon as it happened my my brain was like i'm in danger like what the hell is this feeling it felt like it like i had been attacked like i was in an abattoir or something like that and i'd been applied to like uh, to a meat hook or something um and then the sedative hit and before I knew it, the camera was going in and she, honestly, it was, the closest thing I could equate it to was it was like an uncomfortable haircut. Like I, we were having small talk and then I could see, you know, she's working the, the hose up there. And then she's asking me like, how's your summer been so far? And I was like, oh, that was really, uh, it's been a lot of fun. We actually just went on a cruise last week. And they're like, oh, where did you go? And I was like, oh, we went to Alaska. And then I could see like this, you know, like pink and, I don't know, like tan, pink and beige uh, tube that they're going up. And then she's like, oh, look at that. And then it was, uh, it, it was actually like, I mean, I felt some pressure. It, there were times where I was like, it's a little uncomfortable. 
I was never like it. It's painful, but there, it was a little uncomfortable at times. Before I knew it, it was basically over. And then that was, the, you know, I went and sat down in a, a comfortable chair, and like 15 minutes later, they're like, "You're good to go." That's about it. But I, there's some irony here. I'm I'm hesitant to even say this because it 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 just ties even more into the medical system complaining I've been doing before. The reason I had to get a colonoscopy is because despite all of my symptoms looking like a bacterial infection, when I got, di well, just pre-diagnosis, the doctor that I saw, who admittedly saved my life, probably, was like, you must have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, because if you didn't, then you wouldn't be pooping this much. So she basically made me get a colonoscopy, then when I got the colonoscopy, the doctor was like, everything looks good, except there's a little inflammation in here, but it's probably just a remnant of that severe infection you had, so come back in three months. So, again, even after the diagnosis of the bacterial infection, even after culturing the bacteria, fully genome sequencing it so that we know that it was bacteria, it's antibiotic resistant, etc., etc., they were still like, nah, dude. I promise you, it's ulcerative colitis. Get a colonoscopy. Doctor was like, everything looks normal except for like this one little part here that is just inflamed from possibly what you went through during the infection. So you really didn't, the subtext was like, you didn't really need to be here today. You could have just come in October instead. And uh, I'll see you in October. So I don't know. Like I still, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have gotten a, a colonoscopy and had people go like, or had the doctor go like, everything looks pretty normal up here. And honestly, I'm not sweating it that much. Like the, the prep was annoying, but it's not like, it's not that bad. It didn't even ruin my, it ruined the day before the colonoscopy a little, but it didn't ruin the yesterday. Yesterday, but I will say I'll probably take the 8 a.m. appointment uh, next time rather than starve for three hours in the morning unnecessarily. How long was the queue? Sibs, this is not a joke. The entire colonoscopy was like less time than a woods queue. And I'm not joking. The, the procedure was about as long as three Tarkov raids. But the, the, like the, from showing up at the office, filling out the questionnaire, changing into the gowns, yada, 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 then being released, that was like an hour and a half. The actual part where the camera was inserted into my colon and, and beyond, that was like li literally like 18 minutes. It was nothing. And beyond? Oh, I don't know, they took like a, like a biopsy of some tissue. I was, I, like, I, I felt like I'd had three glasses of Prosecco by the time they took it. I didn't feel anything. However, um, the nurse was like, so just so you know, tomorrow you might feel a little pinch. And then she pointed like, here. She's like, you might feel a little pinch right there. And I was like, how high up did you guys go? And wouldn't you know, last night I'm laying down and I feel the pinch right there. And I'm like, holy cow, you were like... But then I was thinking like, you know, the coal... I've seen the, the an anatomical diagrams of the coal and it goes like... It starts with a big loop. Anyway, how was the sedative? I mean, it was no fun, which is fine, but I was relaxed. I, I thought that it wasn't affecting me at all, but then I remember like I was saying some fairly like dumb shit while the camera was in there. Like, I forget a lot, like I have a fuzzy memory of the procedure, but I definitely, like the doctor said something and I replied with like a joke and laughed a little bit and I said, sorry, I'll try not to laugh. And then after, like, cause I didn't want to clench. And then all three of the staff who were in the room were like, they, did, they just iced me. They didn't say anything. And then after the doctor was talking to me about like what they saw, I just rambled. I was like, yeah, I told the doctor earlier that I don't think it's like any inflammatory bowel disease because I looked up the symptoms online and I didn't have any of the symptoms online. Um, it seemed like everything was really like boiled down to the bacterial infection that I had, but they made me get a colonoscopy anyway, just to rule out any other kind of differential diagnosis. And like that, I can see the doctor going like, 
uh-huh, uh-huh. And then as soon as I finished, I, I knew even under the sedative that I was like, I'm talking too much, but I can't figure out how to wrap it up. And I was, she was just nodding politely. And then she was like, yeah, okay. Well, uh, we're gonna see you in October. So thanks a lot for today. And then she just basically walked out. I'm sure she gets it all the time. Like the people are not of perfect sound mind when they're affected by the sedative, but you know, still. Worst part, the five uh, seconds when I was not well sedated, when they shoved two fingers up my butthole and did a ring around the rosy. But I also, here's the thing, I was like, why didn't they warn me? And I'm like, you know what? I think I understand why they didn't warn me. Because if they warned you, you would tighten up. If they just do it, I don't know if this goes against the Hippocratic Oath, but if they just do it, then you're, you know, they have to do it. <laughs> it's, it's worth looking up at least or something. That's how you lose a finger? Won't you get surprised and tighten up by reflex? Yeah, but if the doctor's digits are already in there, I don't think you're squeezing them out. At least I wasn't after a month of dealing with simultaneous salmonella and campylobacter. The second worst part was the taste of the prep, which is not even that bad. You'll get over it. And the third worst part was the fast. The fasting was like, I was really hungry, but that's about it. How much of this makes it into the YouTube video? None, just because, you know, it, that's a Twitch exclusive. We made YouTube exclusives for eight years. Now we're making some Twitch exclusives. Slash marker just king. To be, do I have moments? Oh my God, dude, hold on. Slash moment, no moment, dude. Origin, are you here? They gave my mods moments. They didn't even give me moments yet. I'm, I saw that Limmy got moments. He was giving out moments nonstop. Where's my moments, man? I did want to give people a moment for being here, uh, like, right after the colonoscopy. It, it right, the, Here's the thing with a moment. Right now, it's not that special. Because you're like, oh, everybody was here for that. But in, like, five years, imagine what how much street cred you would get for having, like, the I was here during the colonoscopy arc badge. Like, that's the thing, is you don't, you don't know... Uh, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone, right? You should have streamed it. I mean, honestly, the thing is, like, it wasn't... The actual... I, I'm not a baby. I was gonna say I'm a sicko, but, like, I'm just gonna steal some valor here. I'm gonna say it, I'm not a baby. When I get, like, a medical procedure done, I don't mind watching. You ever give blood? They, they force, uh, like, a little towel over your vein so that you can't see the needle in your arm? I understand why they do it. But sometimes I'm like a little curious and I'm like, what's going on in here? I don't mind. So they had the camera like in a place where I could see it. I was watching the, the process, but it's not that exciting. It's just a lot of like, you know, you're going down a tube, you're going down a tube. I, I The only time that it was anxiety inducing is when they came to like a, a turn and you're like, I'm going to feel like some pressure in just a second. And then you're like, Wah. Anyway, it was it was completely fine. Hey, I'm going to Iceland in a couple of days. Any recommendations? It depends. Iceland is very cool, and that's not meant as a pun intended. I, I would rather you didn't take it as pun intended, honestly. Uh, if you're staying in Reykjavik for like four to five days, you can go to everything that's recommended, which is actually exactly what you want in like a tourism destination. Go to go to the like go to TripAdvisor. Go to like the five best restaurants for dinner and go to like the five coolest restaurants for lunch. And then there's like three museums, a, a cool looking church and a, a bakery that opens at 4 a.m., which you might be jet lagged to begin with. And then hopefully, um, you know, maybe rent a car and drive around the country a little bit. It is very expensive. It's like insanely expensive. <laughs> That's the other aspect. Will we beat this level, this level. We're gonna be this level. Will we beat this world? Yes, no. World is um, beating the final boss, who we didn't even see this time. So why not say, will we beat the boss? Who cares? Why not part your hair a quarter millimeter to the left instead of where you do it right now? Because at some point in life, you gotta say, you know what, that's good enough. I gotta go to work. The boss is shorter to right. Yeah, but just by, I mean, I, I type like, like 106 words per minute. So just by having to respond to your criticism, it's an order of magnitude more time for both of us and also everybody watching than to have just gone with it to begin with. 
Yeah, I'm flexing. You think I didn't run Mavis Beacon typing school when I was a little kid? I, I have to flex it, you know why? Because in ninth grade, I got a B minus in computer class, which was basically just typing, because my teacher was mad I didn't use the home row, which is like, it's, I mean, it just goes to show you, man. Is it an order of magnitude 10x? Yes. I calculated, I said, how much longer does it take to type this world versus the boss? And I said to myself, the answer is about a third of a second. I spent three seconds eviscerating the person who wrote it in the first place. I think you'll find the, the pedanticness, sorry, the pedantry of it was uh, actually coherent and valid. You're trying to get under the skin of somebody who had someone get inside of his skin yesterday, okay? You're, you're a level like up here. I had 20 minutes of, of a, a snake with a camera for a mouth inside of my colon yesterday. How are you going to affect me? I don't understand. Just shut up and look at the shirt, okay? You seem pretty affected. I mean, I, people always say that. They're like, oh, you seem mad. Well, yeah, when people say, like, dumb shit, I get annoyed with them. Why, why have we created a culture, though, where if you call out someone's dumb comment, they win? Like, hey, you're... I said something stupid and you responded to it and made it clear to a lot of people that it was stupid. I own you. Like, no. You probably don't any own anything. I own like 23% of my house. You think you're gonna own me? I don't think so. Only the bank owns me. Feels good to be drinking some water again. Cause here's the thing, when you drink the four liters of colonoscopy prep juice, they tell you make sure you drink a lot of fluids so you don't get dehydrated. What the hell are you talking about? I can't drink any more fluids. I drank, I drank four liters of goo to clean me out. My stomach is full and empty at the same time. And my doctor was like, hey, she said you did the prep well, but there's a little bit of residue in here. What did you eat yesterday? I said, I didn't eat anything. I just drank apple juice. And she said, what kind of apple juice? Then I told her simply apple, which literally has one ingredient, apples. And she's like, oh yeah, we didn't mean that kind of apple juice. We meant like the, the cheap kind that's like water and ascorbic acid or something and bronze food coloring. I'm like, well, maybe I didn't say this. Maybe you should put that shit on the damn form. I literally bought a juice that uh, was just liquid apple and I'm getting admonished for following your instructions. That you should have interpreted what we meant. It's madness anyway. And then she cried and then she subbed. To the channel to be clear how does your wife like being with a zero ape man i don't know honestly you'll you'll have to ask her plus you don't know that i have zero apes i might own like 10 bored apes i got one is smoking an e-cigarette is wearing a t-shirt that says i'm with stupid i've gotten a lot of good offers on that one do you no i don't own any bored apes i do own 400 Crypto punks, though. They're up for auction right now. If you guys are interested, I lost them all to Snoop Dogg in the metaverse. I did. This is not anti Levy at all. Because I, I was watching a lot of his stream uh, yesterday before my colonoscopy. Because I'm getting back into chess a little bit. But I was laughing at his tweet today that was like. Uh, Come watch me live at the Snapple blockchain bodega in Decentraland. And I was like, I gotta see how this goes. I gotta <laughs> see. I, I, it, as soon as I saw that, I was like, click, let's see these replies. I don't even know what the hell it is, but I gotta take a look. Snapple blockchain bodega is a convenience store in, on, on, in the metaverse. It was great. I bet it was fun. I, I don't, I'd like, again, not in, an, I just, I mean, I just, I hate to say it. I'm really entering my I don't care era <laughs> of like, you know, I'm not saying it's bad to care. All I'm saying is like, it's really easy to like, be mad at anything, which is fine. And some things are worth being mad over, but I, I don't know. I meant like, um, you, you know, there's something called empathy fatigue, which is like when you work in a context where you have to, like a social worker, at some point you hear enough, you know, people's sad stories that you go to work one day, someone tells you a sad story and it doesn't affect you anymore. You've lost all your empathy. I'm at the opposite. I'm at apathy fatigue. Wait, no, I'm at apathy 
appetite. Apathy fatigue just fits so much better. People care so much about everything that I'm like, my, I'm out of cares just for now. They'll come back, I'm sure, but I'm just temporarily out of cares. One day they'll return. But for today, my give a damn's busted. Here's 32 and a half cents, call someone who cares. Has my man been wearing the same shirt all week? Yeah, I learned it from you. Is that a problem? Are you mad I'm, I'm copying your style? No, I, I, I'm, I shouldn't be aware. I should have put a little disclaimer because not everybody in Twitch chat is aware of a thing called the laundry. Unlike some people, I wash my clothes, which means you can wear them on like a Tuesday, wash them on a Thursday, and then have it clean again for Friday. My mom does that. Honestly, she's a smart lady. You should listen to your friend Billy Zane. He's a cool dude. He just wants what's best for you. I'm like, <laughs> so people said leave a good review. I should. The problem with leaving a review on Steam is that when people see it, they give me like Steam awards, which clogs up my email inbox. I'm just like, it, I mean, but like, it, it's not bad to get, but it's kind of annoying. You get like every day I get like an email that's like, you've received a new Steam award. The I see what you did there award for seven uh, uh, little Steam points that you can use to get a crying baby poop background. Like if it was like real, if, if you could use Steam points for, like, redeeming for Steam games, that'd be, like, a dream come true. But my trading cards... Dude, I should look at... Okay, well, either way. Let me let me go into my Steam inventory real quick. Let's see what kind of card packs I got in there. They're still doing card packs? I know, don't tell me. Card packs are amazing. I spent eight hours selling them, and I earned uh, enough money to buy Just King. Sure, that's fine. Can I... Where do, where do you see your trading cards? I'm in my... I'm in my item inventory. Can I look for a specific item? Cards. Look for a specific item. Pack. Oh my god. Dude, I have so many trading cards. Holy cow. What's some good ones here? What are some games I really enjoyed that I could open up here? You know what? How about this? I got a, three trading cards in my golfing over it pack. Let's unpack those. I got two Horsune Miku cards. Anybody need a Horsune Miku card from the uh, from the golfing over it trading cards on Steam? I haven't played so many of these games in like in forever. I got some. What is this? Oh, I remember regular human basketball. Hey, three cards from Rise of the Tomb Raider. Five packs sold in the last twenty four hours. How is that possible? I got Beginnings, Rise, and Searching. Hmm. Okay. How about, um, how about, oh, dude, my Hollow Knight pack. I could sell this for 35 cents Canadian. That's actually, considering I got it for free, that's not that bad. Also, 35 sold in the last 24 hours. The Hollow Knight community stays winning. But guess what? I'm, I mean, I feel like 35 cents. That's got to be like a pretty substantial pack. Like this Hollow Knight pack is well liked. Guess what? I'm unpacking it. 35 cents? Throw it into the paper shredder. I got two quirrels and a broken shell. Those worth anything? Let me go check the price of this quirrel real quick. There he is. Okay. Starting at 10 cents. So there's 20 cents. And broken shell, broken shell, 10 cents. I, how to turn 35 cents into 30 cents minus Steam's cut on top of that. Son of a bitch. You could open foil packs. Dude! Wait, no, you can open foil in the packs. I got some foil cards. Any good ones here? CSGO foil card. 43 cents. A hazmat foil card from Dying Light. What a game, man. When did this become Dan's stream? Gambling is so funny. I have a, I have a foil card worth 83 cents from Hood Outlaws and Legends, which I played once for a sponsored stream. I it looks like I need to go back and correct my taxes for last year. I didn't realize there was another 83 cents. I, I should uh, remit a, a portion of to the government as well. Is there any way to sort your Steam inventory by by rarity? By the, I do have to tell you, I I love this card. I have a Daniel, it's just called Daniel, foil trading card from the Dark Pictures Anthology Little Hope. 
And it, Daniel, if you don't remember, was the guy from Little Hope who looked like Dan. I have to trade that to him. He needs the, the foil Daniel card. And he wore a red shirt. 43 cents? No, I would, I would give it to Dan in a heartbeat. Steam tools item value on Google? Okay, look, I'm just honestly... I probably should do that, but I'm not going to do that. Kate needs a My Doll. Okay, I'm on it. One moment, please. Okay, I'm back for a second. I wanted to bring my... Uh my daughter, because I'm going to have to get her some chocolate milk. Say hi, Chad. Hey, come back. Don't you want to say hi, Chad? Okay, I'll be back in just one second. I'm just getting some chocolate milk for, for my daughter. Okay, I'm back. Hello. I have both cats and the baby in my office right now. Can you say hi, Chad? She's, she's just chugging the chocolate milk, though. Just give her a second. Hey, you. Milk. you like chocolate milk? Yeah. What's the best drink? Chocolate. Chocolate. So true. You want to come sit? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. It's turn... Hi, chat. Here's what we're going to do, okay? Turn three. We're on a flawless right now, okay? Yeah. Can you say go, daddy? Go, daddy. Okay, but not like that's not sponsored by the Go Daddy Corporation, okay? I think we're looking for something like this. We're rolling once. Oh, animals. There's animals. What animals do you see on the screen? You see a Mickey Mouse? Yeah. Okay. That's a croissant any day of the week. Forget about this cricket. Pluto. You see Pluto? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Hold on. They're on the same line. But they have a sheep. Sheep is insane. It's goaded. Yeah, daddy. That's Daddy? Yeah. Where's Daddy? That, that zero on the number pad is Daddy? Oops. We drew. Don't don't press any buttons, please, honey. Don't press any buttons, please, honey. Here, let Daddy give you a hug, okay? Oh, so cute. Rotate. You gotta rotate the chocolate milk. I did it. You did it? Yeah. Hey, congrats. Koala. You see a koala. Turtle. A turtle. What's this? Ant. What's this? What's this animal? No, no turtle. Is there's another turtle? Yeah. This animal, uh, Ruka, you can't get in the cords, please. If you'll excuse me, you can't go down there. Hold on. This one. This one? Yeah. There's another screen that has the same stuff on it. What does this say? What, well, you don't know what it says, but what animal is this? It goes buck, 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 buck. Yeah, this one? That's a chicken. You should still be frozen. I respect you for being Daddy, frozen. Daddy. What's wrong? The chocolate milk. The chocolate milk's empty? No. You need some more chocolate milk? Yeah. Okay, let's see if Daddy wins this one, and then we can get some more chocolate milk, okay? Can you go wait by the fridge, and I'll get you some more chocolate milk? Hold on. Daddy's pogging real quick. There's three. Okay, I'll be back in, in just a second. <laughs> hey, fishy hat. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, honey, yeah, that's right. You know, because you appeared on stream today, Daddy can now write off all of our childcare expenses. 
as uh, business expenses, at, uh, much to the chagrin of the Canadian taxpayer. Juice. I got juice. You got juice? I got, I got chocolate milk. Yeah, you got chocolate milk. My own, you want to do cheers. Honey, come back, come back. Hold on, I got to take her up the stairs so she can see Kate again. One sec. I'm sorry. All right, I'm back. Whew. Dude, how is this run only in three wins? I've been laser focused, okay? Look, I do kind of look like the zero on the numpad, okay? I, like, I'm, she she did soul read me there, and, and she wasn't wrong. Nice to see you live, finally, not just on YouTube. You get... Oh, I lived. You get to see the, um, the raw stuff that I cut out for YouTube, like when I have to leave three times in eight minutes in order to um, get some chocolate milk and deliver some beverages around my house. It's definitely... It's a bit of a hectic day in the old homestead today, for sure. Hold on. I gotta figure out what to do with this, with this cat, man. Ruka, what are you, what are you doing? The whole household is in disarray today. Would you just, if you come in and you just sit nicely, then that's fine. Can you just go sit in your little improvised cat bed over there? On my old gym towel? There you go. Isn't that, or do you wanna, do you wanna come up here? You wanna come up in the cat tree? What does that sound mean? Hello, 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 hello. There you go. He's coming right down. I can tell you that he's coming right down. I do love, like, every time you don't get 10 wins, people are like, here's why your best unit isn't that good. And I'm like, well, wait, okay. Instead of looking at the, the fact that we had a 50-50 lion that didn't single-handedly win us the game in a pack where scaling is insane, how about having a 21-4 ant for no reason? Like, that's a, that's a bigger mistake in my world, I would say. You already admitted you say people say when nobody said it. And you just admitted that you watch too much of my content. Spread the love around a little bit. Lots of good streamers on the website. Oh, they're all playing either Valorant or Escape from Tarkov. Okay, well, I'm happy to have you here. I understand. Any Valorant refugees in the, in the chat right now? Anyone raise your hand if you'd rather be watching another streamer but they're playing Valorant right now? I, I, no shame. I won't take any offense to it. Raise your hand if you'd rather be watching another streamer but they're playing Escape from Tarkov right now? T 10,058 viewers? Okay, that, honestly, I expect to see thousands of, uh, of hands up. <laughs> no, no offense taken. I, I'm genuine. I'm being genuine with you. Oh, I'm not watching because they're playing Fall Guys? Okay, that's a rare chat L. Just kidding. It's a very common chat L. Fall Guys is sick. We might even play some Fall Guys at the end today. I don't know. I haven't figured it out. I'm only watching because my favorite streamer isn't playing Escape from Tarkov. Now, that's a, a rare one. I'm only watching because of the shirt. Now, that I respect. Level me. Level me. Bad game. Nice shirt. I'll take that. Dude, I'm, so this is like, I, I'm going out for a walk after the stream so the baby can take a nap. What's the temperature today? 28 Celsius? That's not that bad. I'm so stoked to be wearing like cool guy shirt in a cool guy city. I'm gonna go to some cool guy places. I might go to a plant-based butcher shop. And you know, I should wear a dad hat too. And maybe I'll, oh, I can't bike, I have the baby. <laughs> Button it up to the top. I'm wearing short shorts, and I'm going to roll the cuffs up a little bit. It'll probably compress my, um, the, the arteries in my legs. I may end up uh, needing to wear compression socks for the rest of my life, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear knee-high socks. I'm going to roll up the cuffs on my short shorts. I'm going to hit a brewery. I'm going to hit a plant-based butcher shop. I'm going to deposit some fresh produce into a community refrigerator. And I'm gonna bait conflicts with traffic. I'm gonna like get ready to jaywalk. And then when the car looks like they're gonna go on their green, I'm gonna go, hey! 
hey, and then if they stop, I'm gonna go in front of the car, I'm gonna smack the hood, I'm gonna go, hey! It's gonna be a great afternoon. I'm walking here! I'm not gonna, do, I'll probably go to a brewery and get some stuff to go, but I'm not gonna, the rest of that was just a joke. I'm just gonna listen to a podcast while I walk around. Maybe buy a cold drink because it's pretty hot outside. Okay, you buy faint triggers, probably play some Pokemon Go. There's no probably involved. I will definitely play some Pokemon Go. But I mean, people are like, oh, I can't believe you still play that. So what do you do? You just don't turn it on when you're on a walk? What's the point? Like it doesn't, you don't do anything. It's just like, it's, a, it's just a time spender, you know? I don't go, I don't do an excursion like outside of my house just to play Pokemon Go. But if I'm outside of my house anyway, I'm like, yeah, we might as well turn on the Pokemon Go. Do you ever unplug from the internet? I was on a cruise for like a week. I only had data on a couple of those days for a very limited amount of time. And it, it was kind of refreshing, but it's also like when people are like, oh, I'm so happy to have been away from the internet for a week. I guess if you like need the, the break, then it's a different story. But like, I was like, Honestly, it's kind of nice to, like, have access to information. Like, there were some times where I was like, dude, this is like, like, I'm a little bored. It's 8 p.m., the baby's in bed. I can't leave the room, because what if the baby needs me? What am I gonna do? Like, I, that's, that's prime scrolling hours. What kind of throne does the king of colonoscopy sit on? I don't want to brag, but it's an Erman Millar. It's probably a guy from like Illinois. Name is Herm. But in my head, he's like a European. He looks like the Merovingian from the second Matrix movie and the fourth Matrix movie. Oh, yes, me. Uh, je m'appelle Erman Millar. He looks very different between those two movies. Yeah, you probably look very different between those two movies, too. They're called Telomeres. I mean, I'm not, that's not even an own. Like, I look very different between those two movies. I'm 33 and bald now. I was like 14 when the second Matrix came out. Did you see the Tim Hortons class action lawsuit? Oh, you mean the one where they illegally spied on Canadians using the app for years? And then the class action settlement is that everybody that, that had the app over that period is entitled to one free hot drink and donut? Yes, I did see that. Why do you ask? But you, the most fucked up part about it is that it re in order to get the settlement, it requires you to actually eat at Tim Hortons. Anyway, I had a good Peloton ride today. I can't remember... I mean, I, I rode today, which I wasn't thinking I was going to do to begin with because of the colonoscopy. But um, I, I rode today and I had a good performance. Thinking I was like somewhere between... I think I was at like 331 output on a 30 minute ride. So I was feeling, I was feeling a little more solid. Level three, Dragonfly? Ooh, sheesh! That's not even that, I'm so excited over a 1-1 one, one buff. <laughs> it's, well, no, it's 3-3 three, three buff. Ah. What are you, what? Oh my God, this cat went into the cords. Oh my God, dude, I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. Yo. You're not supposed to be back there. Get out of there. Get out. Go. You know you're not supposed to be in the courts. Get out of the courts. You can't be there. You're walking backwards into the courts? Oh my god. Hey you. Get out of here. You can't be in the courts. It's 28 Celsius. I'm sweating just pulling you out of the area here. Okay. Holy cow. These cats are haters, man. I can feel the vein. The vein's coming back. Hey, NL, do I have your permission to take off from work early? Yes. Here's the thing. It's fucking... 
Friday, dude. It's a Friday. It's it. Not only is it a Friday, it's the last Friday in July. I hope that if you work like in an office, I hope you're not doing anything because nobody else is doing anything. And the way that white collar work works is that you need other people to work so that you can work. If nobody else is working, you're all a cog in the machine. You're like, well, I can't get this done because Beth is on vacation until the second week of August. And even if I get it done, my boss doesn't come back until next Thursday, right? So like, yeah, you sh I mean, you should take off early. It's basically a half day in PR to begin with. I thought Friday was the busiest day in PR because you got to draft all those um, press releases that you drop like right at quitting time on Friday. So the journalists are not working over the weekend and they don't report on the fact that you had like an oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. I thought Friday was like, was like PR Monday. It is a long weekend in Canada. I will say, dude, we got like a... Just again, I'm, I'm really not trying to become like a foreign-funded uh, agent to undermine confidence in the Canadian medical system. But we're dealing with a situation right now where like Kate's dad, he has a symptom that should be urgent. Called our family doctor. The uh, administrative assistant who picked up the phone said, that sounds urgent, go to urgent care. He went to urgent care. Urgent care said, this might be like a neurological issue, so you need to talk to your family doctor and uh, get referred to a neurologist. Call back the family doctor. No call back for 48 hours. Call back again. The administrative assistant says, oh, sorry, she went on vacation this morning um, and she won't be back for a month. Okay, so you you pass the buck to urgent care. Urgent care says we can't do anything here. Passes the buck back to the GP. And then you call the GP and they're like, we're going on summer vacation. So then you're like, okay, what do you do? I don't know. It's like I really, the last two or three months of, of us going through healthcare concerns have really felt like Every place you go to is like, thanks for waiting eight hours. What are you doing here? Get out of here and go to a different place. Then you go to that place and they go, what are you doing? You can't come here with that. You can't come to a neurologist without a referral. Go to your doctor and get a referral. Well, my doctor's on vacation. And there's no like follow up doctor. OK, then you got to go to the emergency room. But I go to the emergency room. They're like, you, you, you didn't break your leg. We don't know how to treat this. You got to do it. It's good, but it, but it, like, it never ends, man. They're all, you're just spending eight hours a day going to someplace else that doesn't want you to be there. I was, I was way more of a fan of the healthcare system before I got sick. That was the... <laughs> Two years ago, I was like, man, in BC, we got the best health, healthcare system in the world. Then I had to go to my family doctor, urgent care, a hospital, a gastroenterologist, and my father-in-law is having some health issues at the same time. He has the audacity to have an emergency issue in the summer when people are going on vacation and the emergency room doesn't want to see him. Um, and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not getting attention right now and I need it. Can you please help me? It's crazy though. You can't find a doctor here, but there's like dentists on every corner. I think with God as my witness, I think I could probably walk into almost any dental office and be like, hey, I just was wondering if you guys had space for like a cleaning today. I think they would fit me in. I think they'd say, sit down in a chair, read a magazine, and, and within an hour, you're going to be sitting in the dentist chair. Now, I would be paying out of pocket for that. So <laughs> no thanks, but Saikuno is better at Fall Guys than you. That's probably true. I'd have to imagine that's probably true. I would say any any false statements in chat answer probably not. I feel I don't feel dissed right now. I feel um, I simply feel like you've observed two people playing this game long enough to make a factual statement. <laughs> Sips is better. Okay, now that's a that's a bold faced lie that I take some offense to. My eight year old is better at Fall Guys than you. I would say that's probably false. This, what a cursed starting position here, man. I'm not even in a damn lane. I gotta take the Pythagoras angle. If you, if you were like my 12-year-old's better at this game than you, I would be like, that sounds plausible for sure. But 8-year-old, um, I don't think so. I think I'd probably crush him. Like, dude, my, my niece is 10, and she is like, not, not to be rude to her, she's, she's a very nice girl. She's a shit gamer. She's no good. <laughs> she's... 
I mean, if we played Halo, like, it w I'm not good at Halo, it wouldn't even be close, though. She'd get torn up. She'd be put in the damn maw. And in this case, I'm not talking about the name of the final level of Halo 1, where you drive the Warthog out of the back of the ship, the Pillar of Autumn. Did you see that that NASCAR driver had his wind stripped away from him because the car was illegally constructed? It had, like, an illegal modification, by the way. Ooh! <laughs> What they didn't tell you, they said there was an abnormality in the, in the vehicle. You're not going to the courts. You're not going to the courts. There was an abnormality on the front of the chassis. What they didn't tell you, it was an enormous boxing glove attached to a spring. So if anybody got in front of him, he would just go boing and spin him out into the wall. It was a pair of truck nuts. Oh, no. Not the oh no to the truck nuts. Obviously, those are very cool. Also, someone in chat was saying a dream. They had a dream yesterday about how like I streamed something that was atypical for me. I had a dream. I, I don't know if it's again like weird dreams because of the anesthesia that I was on. I had like a, a an odyssey length dream where Apollo was telling me he was going to buy Bitcoin. Which is very out of character for him because he doesn't even have a, an IRA. But I just remember he was like, dude, dude, when it gets to 2K, I'm backing up the truck and buying a bunch of Bitcoin. And I was like, I've never heard you talk about it before in my entire life. Like, what happened? And he's like, dude, I'm telling you, it's a sure thing. It, and then I woke up and I was like, it felt weird to me because I was like, why was Apollo talking to me so much about Bitcoin? And then I was like, oh, that's right. It was literally just a dream. Did you see Prince William is into pegging? Well, yes and no, okay? I saw that the Prince of Pegging was one of the top trending hashtags yesterday. And then I was laughing. Maybe it's just from like having been online a long time and being a little bit on the older side. But I clicked on it and I was laughing at all the people that like they're just serial reaction gift posters. I'm dead, I'm alive. And they were like, I should have trusted my instincts and not looked up what pegging is today. They were all like so, like so shocked. I wish I could never know what that is again. And I'm like, it's not, like I'm not into it. But even I don't think it's weird. Seems like, I, I mean, I'm surprised you hadn't heard about it before now, but I guess you follow the royal family. So maybe I shouldn't be surprised, but like, like there's some crazy, there's people out there who are like right when they're about to nut, they're like, oh yeah, punch me in the balls, like as hard as you can. Pegging doesn't, it seems almost pedestrian by like 2022 internet standards. The fact that you would look it up and be like, oh, my fragile uh, ecosystem is permanently in disarray as a result is like, it's, that just seems like you just want attention to me. Or is it because you don't want to imagine it because he's bald, because you have an anti-bald bias? In which case, you know, take one of these. Just imagine I'm making a middle finger and Call me in the morning. Has your stance on pegging changed from your colonoscopy experience? No, I don't think you can infer much from it. Like, I did not enjoy that when, without warning, the doctor put two fingers into my rectum and did like a Captain Hook motion to, to lubricate it so that the colonoscopy camera could get in. But I also feel like, you know, in an intimate situation, that's probably not the way that you would start, you know? You would probably communicate more and, and be in a different sort of state um so i don't think you can use that data point as representative of how you feel about it i don't know I, I i mean i can't say this with with any kind of confidence but i don't think even the people that are into the butt stuff i don't think that they're like oh yeah put vaseline on two fingers and then without warning give me like a little fish hook rotation down there maybe but you probably don't start there at the very least you probably, you start at like, you know, the tip of your pinky finger, please. And then you're like, okay, just, you know, we only got six minutes. Give me the fish hook. It's the only way I can feel something. Please no more. Are you a, a royal family enjoyer? What's the problem? It's just a human body. It's not that weird. I'm screaming, Laval. It's not weird to talk about it. I had a colonoscopy. Don't... I, I'm not going to act like I'm a, a soldier for um, men's health. But, like, I, I don't... I want to normalize the idea that getting a colonoscopy is not weird. Because, like, 
if you procrastinate getting a colonoscopy when your doctor tells you to get one, like, you're possibly gonna risk, like, serious and semi-preventable, like, health outcomes. I don't know why I was so cagey with my wording there, but either way, like, it's, it's genuinely not weird. It's actually, like, I, I was putting myself into my, like, gastroenterologist shoes, which seemed fair, considering she was putting herself, well, her camera at least, into my butt. But either way, I'm sure that for her is like the most boring day of all time. Brr, oh, like she comes to work in the morning and is like, oh, I can't wait for my like one o'clock to be done so I can leave early. Like she's just, she doesn't think it's weird at all. She's just, she's doing this shit all day, every day. If she doesn't think it's weird, why should I think it's weird? Also, the other thing that I, I guess I would add is maybe I, I'm a little bit more like biased for not finding this medical stuff weird, because I also, I mean, I had testicular surgery in the 11th grade. So I was like, you know, this, you kind of, when you go to a doctor as a high schooler and they shine a flashlight next to your ball, and then you go get an ultrasound and the, to find out whether or not it's testicular cancer, and the ultrasound tech is like your classmate's mom, and then they refer you to a urologist and you got you get your scrotum incised upon and then a sack of fluid like removed from it and then stitched back up and you miss a week of school like you just you're just like dude it's just the it's just flesh you know yeah the urologist is your classmate's dad and you're like oh my god you guys work in the same industry and you're like you know you get the idea they did surgery on a grape i i was such a nerd in high school too that like i didn't actually take the whole week off from school, which is funny. After two days, I said, I'm feeling good enough to go back. So I went back. But yeah, I mean, like, honestly, I, I don't know. I think I owe it to you to be, like, open about medical procedures, at least on that level. Like, if I was getting a height extension, I would never tell you. You would just be like, holy cow, when did he go from 6'8 to 6'11? But like a colonoscopy, yeah. If you gotta get it done, but you're like, oh, I'm, I don't know, I'm a little weird about it. Okay, just fucking, I mean, it's, it's not gonna be the best day on the planet, but just nut up and do it. You know how pathetic it is that you'd rather just die? This is the stupidest equation of all time. It is also, you. All, I think that it helps to like, oh my God, it's Batista. It helps to remember that the fact that colonoscopies actually like exist is a medical marvel. Like 50 years ago, you would just die. And then like 30 years ago, they could probably do it, but I bet it sucked like a lot more. Although that is also to say that probably in like 30 years, it might suck a little less. Are you excited to get one at 50? I'm excited to get one in October, my brother in Christ. Uh, new record, get hit by in infinity of those. I tried to grab him so he'd fall. I I'm, dude, I'm, I'm a piece of shit now. And I'm loving it. That's fine. See ya, nerds. Okay, what? Grab him, grab him. Nice jump. <laughs> oh, dude. Ooh, he was slightly inhibited as a result of my actions. Yeah, I don't recommend doing things that way, but on the other hand, here we are. Stop grabbing me. Right, you grab them right as they try to jump. Oh, he almost got slightly in it. Fuck you. Someone stepped on my foot as I tried to jump into the fan. My body crumbled into the fan, and then it just blew me straight into the garbage can. You look like the president on a bicycle. Look, honestly, nonpartisan, as a nonpartisan, as someone with no political opinions, that's just funny. Any per the more power a person has, the more funny it is when they fall off of a bicycle, or slip on a banana peel, or they go to drink, uh, from like a cup, but the lid's not on properly, and then it all spills out over their shirt. To to see a, a god humbled, it just brings a smile to my face. Yeah, or they're they're chasing after like a, a like a road runner, 
and then like um, they try to chase it into a tunnel, but they don't realize that the tunnel has actually been replaced with like a canvas that is painted really quickly to look like a tunnel. And then his face comes out and it's completely like, it's like a two dimensional pancake. And then he goes, boom, and then it all pops out. And he looks like himself again, and then he goes and crosses his arms and goes, meh, 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 and then goes ding, and then he has an idea, and he's they you get the rest of it. He straps himself to like a big red firework and shoots off into the sky or something like that, and then it says boom, and his hair turns into like Krusty the Clowns, but like it's just a little string coming up, and there's smoke coming out of the top of his head. You get the idea. I'm okay. I, I couldn't handle this, honestly. Worth. <laughs> I don't even think he would have qualified, but it felt amazing to... to stop him, to feel like I stopped him. Chat spam minus two. They're not a hive mind. They're not uh, a monolith that you can just influence into saying whatever you want. Hey, chat. Uh, oh, hold on. My stomach hurts. Watch the lulls roll in. Let the lulls roll in. No, that's a lot of minus twos. Okay, you got me. I did the fart sound so, like, vigorously. I feel like I actually damaged, like, my mouth. I, everybody has the same story about waking up from sedation, which is you get the mask put on, unless you have a valid medical exemption, and then they say count backwards from 10 or count backwards from 100, and then you get to like 97 and you're like, this shit is never going to work. And the next thing you know, someone's like shaking your shoulders in a hospital bed hours later. Asking you if you want like a tuna sandwich or a ham sandwich. The time just doesn't exist, which I guess is, I mean, I feel like with sleep, you're like sort of aware that time is passing. Like, I feel like if you woke me up at a random point in my sleep and we're like, how long have you been asleep? I could be within 90 minutes, 50% of the time. That's just from the light level. No, I sleep with the lights on and the curtains uh, always closed, even during the day and no clocks. I sleep, on the, I sleep on the floor of the Bellagio Casino every night. Bring ding 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 bring you our next lucky winners. Can you add a name a woman channel points condition like Apollo? Listen. No, but it's not because I can't name a woman. It's because Apollo got it first. And also I had the dream interaction with that when I was in his chat yesterday. Someone redeemed it and said name a woman. He said uh 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 Felicia Day and I typed the first bat chest in chat. The first bat chest that launched a hundred bat chests. Oh man. It's a feeling of incredible power, especially in Apollo's chat. Cause in Apollo's chat, um, people usually tell me to like shut up or they just ignore me. So to actually have some influence there feels good. Also, I was asking like, he was talking about old emotes. And then I was like, what's the one that looks like the guy's drunk out of his mind and he's going like, the. What's that one? I haven't... It's cropped kind of like badly. Yeah, there it... I, I can't mouse over it to see what it is. That's the one I was trying to get at. People were like, do you mean Craigasm? Oh, I know what Craigasm is. It's like my most typed emote to Dan. Say, I'll type something like, yo, when you finish Cuphead, you gotta check out Just King. It's 2022 Snake RX, and people love to watch it. Colon, Craigasm, colon. I don't lose. I don't lose this one. Okay, I need to see this emote again. Can you guys show me the emote? To show the one where the guy goes. Bleh. That is called broke back. It's a classic emote. Is the guy named like TTV broke back or something? You asked. I did ask, but like <laughs> that is a lot of really bad emotes, dude. 
Like, or maybe they're really good. Stone Lightning is incredible. Like, they didn't crop it. Is it too late? Like, is it read only or something? <laughs> it's so good. I use chip gaming all the time. It's a picture of me. I love using the pictures of me that are not my emotes when I go to other people's chat. Lion Nice is an all-timer. I was having a Lion Nice day that day. It was at PAX. We got some Korean food. I don't want to, uh, you know, just name drop. But we did get some Korean food with uh, David Galindo, the developer of Cook, Serve, Delicious. And also... Uh, Zach Barth, also known as the uh, eponymous Zach from Zachtronics. By the way, I'd like to apologize to the believers. And now I look to see if people are pogging over my name drop or if they're dropping brokebacks because of my name drop. The hammer of God. The hammer of God! <laughs> Huge. I remember having a, a conversation with uh, with Zach from Zachtronics, and he was he was like confused about why there were sponsored streams for streamers. And he was like, "These companies are paying like a lot of money for something that I don't think works." And I was like, "We're gonna get along really well," because I ask myself that same question every time. I'm like, "This is not worth what you're paying for it in the slightest." You start running back of the number, back of the napkin calculations, you're like, I can't see how this could possibly be profitable for you. <laughs> Do death row inmates get to pick a last fit? Dude, someone was saying, I don't remember whose chat, it was probably Apollo's chat. They were saying that you don't even get to pick a last meal on death row anymore. Is it because, like, someone's execution got stayed at the last minute too many times in a row and like ruined it for everybody They're like this is like the 15th last meal you've had we're getting sick of cooking you like 23 lobsters and <laughs> like a 15 liters of dr pepper and a, like homemade cornbread and stuff like that you gotta just tank the the, the balls you just gotta unslap the balls they they stopped it because too many people were trolling one guy ordered a feast and they refused to eat it that doesn't feel like they're death row inmates you, you can't just have them get one less troll or one last troll i should say one one last prank for old times sake like they're literally dying dude i'd be so pissed if i was wrongfully convicted of like murder i was in death row and for my last meal i had to eat like prison food it's probably like the worst shrimp and like minute rice you've ever had in your life like my university cafeteria where they don't do they they're like hey we got uh it's shrimp jambalaya for dinner and then you go and it's like the little shrimps they're not even like a normal size shrimp they're like all the shrimp are like this big no not even the popcorn shrimps i'm just they're like little cooked shrimp there's like you know there's your jumbos and your prawns and your stuff like that and then you got like, you know, your tiger shrimp and stuff like that. Then you got like a normal shrimp. And then in the in the Sodexo cafeterias, they'd be serving shrimp that are like this big. Yeah, salad shrimp. Thank you. They were, they were putting salad shrimp in a hot entree. It's such an incredible culinary sin. I can't believe they're allowed to operate with impunity. I'm 22 years old. Can you guess how many colonoscopies I've had? I feel like it's like... If you've had one colonoscopy at 22, you've probably had four colonoscopies in your life. So I feel like it's it's like feast or famine. Like a lot of people out there having zero colonoscopies, and a lot of people, the people that get one colonoscopy are likely to get more. Like damn, share a bit, save some colonoscopies for the rest of us. Dude, even like the gastroenterologist that I went to, she was like trying to make me feel a little guilty. She was like, we fit you in because this was like an urgent referral, but otherwise you wouldn't have a colonoscopy until like December. Like we're booking around the holiday season. And I'm like, this can't be true. There can't, I, I just don't believe that there's that many people getting colonoscopies. You would hear about it more often. It's a trend. That's uh, probably, you know what? They're like, dude, colonoscopy before pink sauce, zero out of 10. Colonoscopy with pink sauce, 10 out of 10. We do 30 colonoscopies a day in my small hospital. 
Well, if you're doing so many colonoscopies a day, why is there such a backlog? I think they're just giving them out for sport at this point. That's probably not true. There are a lot of old people. That's definitely true. The healthcare system is very ageist. If you're young, they're like, get to the back of the line. I was telling this story to Kate last night. She didn't believe me, but anyone who's had this experience will be like, that sounds about right. When I was uh, 20... I'm dead. Yep. Probably can't fit one more. When I was uh, 22 or 23, I came back from Korea. And I said, I, I had like lumps on the side of my neck. So I was like, I'm dying. I, I made an appointment for a full body physical with my family doctor. My, when I went in for the appointment, this was a, a beautiful time because it was, uh, I was able to get an appointment within like two weeks, okay? So two weeks later, I go in and I say, uh, well, first I say, hello, doctor. And she says, hey, just for today, just for today, I'm going to have a medical student do the examination. I said, okay, whatever. And then my doctor left the room and I said, um, hey, I have these lumps in my neck that I'm worried about. She literally went like this. She went like for a, a, a millisecond. She was like, and then she was like, hmm, it's probably just fat. First off, rude. Secondly, can you approximate your level of confidence, your confidence interval on whether or not it's fat? Because if it's like 99.1, then sure, I trust you. If it was like 55.45, I think I'd like to have some like biopsies taken or something like that. And then I said, okay, well, also, uh, I'm here for a physical. And then she said, typically we don't do physicals on young men unless they present with like symptoms. And I said, okay, doctor, thank you for your time. Fucking see you never. Um, appreciate it. What a what a good what a good use of taking half a day off work and sitting around in like the waiting room and like having you look at my chart and filling out all these forms and questionnaires and stuff like that. And then I'm like, I mean, I here's the thing. I think everybody knows like the problem with well, one of the problems with the healthcare industry is that if you go in early to see if something's wrong, they tell you like, what are you doing here? You're not dead. So you wait until it becomes like an acute, serious issue. And then nobody like you when it was easily treatable, they didn't want to see you because there were people with very serious presenting problems. Now that you have a serious pre presenting problem, they're like, why didn't you come to see us earlier? But you can't go to the doctor for preventative medicine because there's too many people that have serious issues, which means your preventative issue becomes a serious issue. And you're constantly like pushing the like you're just right. It's not a it's a mixed metaphor, but you're robbing Peter to pay to pay Paul. Robin Dick to, to pay balls. Exactly. Robin, Robin this wizard to unslap my balls. I was like, honestly, if you go to the, if you're forced to go to the emergency room for like an internal medicine problem, it's fucked up that they, you're jealous of people that have like broken legs. Cause you're like, I bet the doctor could fix that shit. The doctor is going to call you in and be like, your legs broken. Fucking go down to this room, get a cast and here's some painkillers. That's what we were saying, like, if, if Kate's dad can't get, uh, like, his neurological issue looked at because our family doctor's on vacation, and you can't go see a neurologist without a referral, um, but you can't get a referral from anybody but your family doctor because urgent care is like, I can't give you a referral for some reason, then, like, the next step is that he has to just call an ambulance and be like, I'm having a heart attack. And then when he gets to the hospital, be like, oh, my heart feels a little bit better, but can you check out, like, my arm? My arm's a little messed up right now. And then Kay was like, next time you have to go to the hospital, you should do that, but like with your hair. Just every time you go to the e ER, be like, I know this is hard to believe, but I woke up and all my hair fell out. They're going to put you at the front of the line and be like, this guy's near death. And then when you get to the front of the line, be like, yeah, all my hair fell out. Also, I've had diarrhea for two weeks straight. They're going to be like, we got to get to the bottom of the hair thing. And then you're like, no, I'm actually kind of starting to like it. But the diarrhea thing is like really, <laughs> is really putting the damper on my quality of life right now. Someone said it might be illegal, which is also you admitting that it might not be illegal. I didn't sign shit. Anyway, I apologize. I'm really, I'm not anti-healthcare industry. I'm just a little bit annoyed. 
that it seems like nobody wants to treat you. And instead, they're just like, you shouldn't be here. You should be at like this place. Then when you get to that place, they're like, well, did you get the form? And you're like, what form? And then they hand you like some shit fresh off the Xerox. It's hot like a fresh Krispy Kreme donut. And they're like, have you ever had a sore throat? And then you got to like, they basically watch you lie to them. You're like, no, I've never had a runny nose in my entire life. It's never happened. Because if I tell you that I've ever had a runny nose, you're not going to let me come in here and get my diarrhea looked at. So, of course, I've never had a runny nose. Heart and soul. It's got a lot of heart and soul. I don't know the rest of the words, but it's got a pretty good bass line, pretty good bass line, heart and soul. My wife is streaming Mahjong Monday's Pog. I'll send you right over to her stream. Hope you have a great rest of your Monday night. I'll see you tomorrow for Dome Keeper. Boop, I scram